The term freak of nature is often used because regular people can't fathom the size and athletic ability of the most talented NBA players. Out of all the high-flying superhumans that ever played in the league, we selected the biggest freaks of nature in the history of each NBA team. Atlanta Hawks, Spud Webb. It would be logical that Dominique Wilkins, aka the human highlight film, would be listed here, but we figured it was more spectacular when short people dunk. At 5'6", Spud Webb is the second shortest player ever, and it's a miracle he even made it to the NBA. But Mr. Webb got to the league because he was extremely quick and because he had springs in his legs. In 1986, he became the shortest player ever to win a dunk contest, where he defeated over a foot taller Dominique, his teammate on the Hawks. Boston Celtics, Bill Russell. At 6'10 and 230 pounds, Bill Russell wasn't a freak of nature by today's standards. However, 6'10 was a lot in the 50s and the 60s, and at that height, Bill Russell could run the break like a point guard, block every shot on defense, and was the only guy who could contain prime Wilt Chamberlain. Oh, and he did all of that in flat-footed Converse All-Stars. Brooklyn Nets, Kevin Durant. The Nets history is over 50 years long, but the biggest freak of nature in franchise history just started playing for the team. KD is a 7-footer with a 7-foot 5-inch wingspan, and he's one of the best scorers the game has ever seen. The man came off a broken Achilles, and he's still averaging 27 points per game on the most efficient shooting of his career. That's some freak of nature stuff right there. Charlotte Hornets, Muggsy Bogues. Standing at 5'3", Muggsy is as tall as Kevin Hart. He is 5 or 6 inches shorter than those players who got told they are too short to play in the NBA. And yet, Muggsy Bogues played in the League of Giants. He stayed for 14 years, and he was really good. The shortest player in NBA history averaged more than 10 assists in two seasons, and he even blocked 39 shots in his career. Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan. He had a 48-inch vertical, and his nickname was Air. When he dunked, and that was often, he did it with his tongue sticking out. We'll leave it at that. Cleveland Cavaliers, LeBron James. Ever since 2002, the Ohio native LeBron James has been in the spotlight, and he managed to exceed the lofty expectations and justify nicknames that were the chosen one and the king. But when you are born with the body of a tight end, the speed of a wide receiver, and the brain of a quarterback, heck, you really are the chosen one. Dallas Mavericks, Kristaps Porzingis. The award for the biggest freak of nature in Mavs history could have gone to 7'6 Sean Bradley or even the 7'4 Boban Marjanovic who currently plays for the team. But in the end, we decided to lower the bar one inch so that 7'3 Kristaps Porzingis can get in. Why? Because at 7'3, Porzingis runs, jumps, and plays more like a wing player than a center. He can dribble, shoot the threes nobody can't really guard, and protect the rim better than most. Because of this unique versatility, he got nicknamed the Unicorn by one Kevin Durant. Denver Nuggets, Dikembe Mutombo. Dikembe was called Mount Mutombo for a reason. He was a mountain of a man, standing at seven foot and two inches with a pterodactyl seven foot seven wingspan. It was hard to get over Mount Mutombo, and most who have tried only came back with Mutombo's trademark finger wag as a souvenir. Dikembe averaged an astonishing 3.8 blocks during his time in Denver, where he also won the first of his four Defensive Player of the Year awards. Detroit Pistons, Ben Wallace. Ben Wallace was undrafted in 1996 because he was a 6'9 center who didn't have a lick of offense. When he retired in 2012, he was still all of those things, but he was also a champion and a record-tying four-time Defensive Player of the Year. In his prime, Ben Wallace was harder to move than a block of bricks because of how strong he was. Ben never left the gym, and it showed, especially in the 2004 NBA Finals when he was the only person in the world capable of guarding Shaq one-on-one. -on -one. Golden State Warriors, Wilt Chamberlain. 100 points in a game and an average of 50 points in a season and 23 rebounds for his career. Those are just the highlight numbers in a sea of NBA records that still stand today. Wilt could also bench Shaquille O'Neal and Charles Barkley sitting on each side of the barbell and then run 100 meters in 11 seconds. If anybody was a freak of nature in the NBA, it was Wilt Chamberlain. Houston Rockets, Yao Ming. When you are 7'6", you are a freak of nature. When you have a smooth jumper with that height, you are a Hall of Famer. Yao Ming was an all-star in his first couple of seasons because he's Chinese. The fans had 100% of votes back then, and you know, there are over a billion people in China. 
In later years, he was an all-star because he was one of the best players in the game, and there was nothing anybody could do against a guy who can effectively shoot over you anytime he wants to. Indiana Pacers, Jermaine O'Neal. In the early 2000s, Jermaine O'Neal was balling. He was an athletic 6'11 center who averaged 20 and 10 plus 2.5 blocks during his six all-star years in Indiana, when he was one of the best two-way players in the league. Los Angeles Clippers, Blake Griffin. In its glory days, Lob City, LA Clippers were the best show in all of basketball. It seemed that almost every game, someone gets brutally posterized by Blake Griffin, who was converting lob dunks at the highest rate in NBA history. And when he didn't have souls to destroy with his dunks, Blake just jumped over cars. Los Angeles Lakers, Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq was seven foot one, over 300 pounds, and yet nimble as a mongoose. He won four titles, but some people think he could have done more with such immense physical gifts, and those people are probably right. If he trained and applied himself every year, like in his 2000 MVP season, when he looked like a taller version of The Rock, he could have probably won a few more titles. However, you still can't say nothing to the man. He won championships, should have won more MVPs, and he averaged 28 and 12 through the first 14 years of his basketball career, alongside platinum rap albums and Kazam. Memphis Grizzlies, Ja Morant. Ja Morant is a speed demon, and outside of De'Aaron Fox, there is probably not a faster player in the NBA right now. But what separates Morant from other speedsters is his ability to elevate and try to murder everyone who gets between him and the basket. And to be able to do all that, weighing just 175 pounds, is simply amazing. Miami Heat, Dwayne Wade. If you are new to the NBA and you remember Dwayne Wade as a guy who couldn't jump on the scorer's table in his farewell game, please watch some young D. Wade highlights. Young Wade was known as the Flash because there was nobody faster than him in splitting double teams, breaking ankles, and driving to the basket with bad intentions. Just ask poor Anderson Varejao. Milwaukee Bucks. Giannis Antetokounmpo. When your nickname is the Greek Freak, then you should probably make every freak of nature list there is. Giannis took the league by storm with his extremely long steps and the ability to run the full court with two dribbles and then dunk it so hard you probably jumped out of your seat. He packed on some meat on those long limbs since he got drafted, 50 pounds of muscle to be exact, and right now, he's arguably the most athletic player in the NBA. Minnesota Timberwolves, Kevin Garnett. When Kevin Garnett first came to the NBA, he looked like an alien on the court. Seven footers with seven foot five wingspans weren't nothing new, but there was nobody in the league with those measurements weighing less than 220 pounds. He also didn't move like a seven footer and the fans couldn't believe what they were seeing. That skinny kid was guarding all five positions. His already bald head was extremely sweaty and his eyes showed that he was willing to die on the floor. Yeah, KG was one crazy MF when he was out there and that's why everybody loved him. Unless, you know, you had to play against him. Then you probably hated his guts. New Orleans Pelicans, Zion Williamson. Zion Williamson is built like a tank, and yet he moves almost like a ballet dancer on the floor. Guys at 280 pounds shouldn't have a 45-inch vertical, and yet Zion has one. The whole world knows that he's going to go left every time he drives to the basket, and yet nobody seems able to stop him. He is the essence of the term freak of nature because he defies the laws of physics. And if he remains healthy, he's going to be a big problem for the entire league in the future. New York Knicks, Nate Robinson. Nate Robinson is mostly known for three things, being a really short NBA player, a record-breaking three-time slam dunk champion, and getting knocked the hell out by Jake Paul. While he was still competing in his main sport, Nate was one of the most spectacular players in the league, just by the sheer size of him. If you're watching the NBA, it's expected to see guys dunk, but to see Nate do it consistently at 5'9 was really amazing. Oklahoma City Thunder, Russell Westbrook. We're so used to Russell Westbrook's crazy athleticism by now that almost nobody even noticed that this guy averaged another triple-double season in 2021, his fourth such year. Westbrook is the most athletic point guard in NBA history, sans four years of healthy Derrick Rose, and his combination of speed and jumping ability is off the charts. At 6'3", Russ is usually the smallest guy on the floor, but seemingly every game, he's going to grab the rebound, outrun everybody, and finish with a thunderous dunk at the other end. Orlando Magic, Dwight Howard. There are different ways to look at Dwight Howard's career. You can view him as a guy whose bloated contracts have been traded from nearly every team in the league, or 
you can view him as the most dominant center since Shaq due to the unprecedented mobility and leaping ability for a center. Dwight's prime lasted for about five years, during which he won three consecutive Defensive Player of the Year awards, led the league in rebounding each year, and carried the Orlando Magic to the finals. Oh yeah, and he was the closest version of a Superman you'll ever see without CGI. Philadelphia 76ers, Julius Irving. Dr. J was the first one. The first NBA superhero that entered pop culture and the one everybody could watch on TV and wanted to be like him. The first wing player that really soared over the rim and dunked the ball as easily as a seven foot center. What Mike did in the 80s and 90s, Dr. J did it all one decade earlier, whether it's a dunk from the free throw line in a dunk contest or an iconic layup in the NBA Finals. Phoenix Suns, Amari Stoudemire. Amari Stoudemire's nickname was Stat, which stands for Standing Tall and Talented. Stoudemire was a 6'10 power forward with the insane jumping ability and polished offensive arsenal, so it's fair to say his nickname was justified, even though he made it up himself. Unfortunately for Amari and the Suns fans, he was actually too talented for his knees, who couldn't keep up with Stat's high-flying habits. But when he was healthy and in his prime, Amari was one of the best offensive power forwards the game has ever seen, and his dunks off Steve Nash passes were must-see TV. Portland Trailblazers, Clyde Drexler. Clyde Drexler was known as Clyde the Glide for a reason. A 10-time All-Star in the 80s and 90s, Drexler glided in the air with ease that was matched by only Michael Jordan and Dominique Wilkins. Sacramento Kings, Oscar Robertson. There have been many players playing for the Kings recently who were more athletic than Oscar Robertson. But for his era, he was the most athletic point guard ever, the early version of Magic Johnson and LeBron James. Robertson averaged 29 points, 10 rebounds, and 8.5 assists in his 10-year career with the Cincinnati Royals, who changed their name to Kings two years after he left. San Antonio Spurs, David Robinson. David Robinson was 7'1", and his body looked like a sculpture of a Greek god, chiseled by Michelangelo. The Admiral was a lean, mean machine that dominated both sides of the floor. In his first six seasons before he got hurt, Robinson averaged 26 points, 12 rebounds, 3 assists, and 3.5 blocks per game, winning every NBA individual award in the process. Toronto Raptors, Vince Carter. A big reason why the Canadian national team now has over 15 NBA players is Air Canada, Mr. Vince Carter. Drafted in Toronto in 1998, Carter's dunks and athleticism became the biggest highlight in the NBA, and he retired as arguably the best in-game dunker in NBA history. Utah Jazz, Carl Malone. Carl Malone was a slightly bulked up version of LeBron James. Carl was running the fast break like a freight train, and similarly to King James, everybody would move out of the way once he gained a head of steam. They called him the postman because he always delivered. Malone was incredibly strong and fit even after 20 seasons, and he averaged 20 points, 8 rebounds, and 5 assists at the age of 39. Washington Wizards, George Mirson. Born in Romania in 1971, George Mirson grew to be the tallest NBA player ever, standing at 7 feet 7 and a half inches, half an inch taller than Manute Ball. Murasan got the award for the most improved player in the 1996 season and became the first European player to win it. However, injuries started to pile up on his enormous body and his career was basically over in 1997, which allowed him to act alongside Billy Crystal in My Giant. 